Good morning, Leah. How are you today? Good morning, Allison. I'm really good today. Oh, I feel like I'm just like full of energy this morning. How about you? You know, I am not as full of energy as you are, but I am. Good. Like last week, how we were talking about, you know, oh gosh, you know, it just, I can't imagine doing anything but sitting in a chair and reading today. I don't feel like that today. And it's not like I felt bad last week, but I don't think I have the energy levels that you have. This morning has felt like one of those just things are happening before I mean them to. And, you know, yes. yeah. not in control of the day. I have lost control of the day. Already? <laughs> it's only 1030. 1030. I know. Of course, for me, the, the second I wake up, I've lost control of the day. <laughs> because if I had my choice, I would sleep all day. But yeah, go to work, oh, whatever. I wake up. <laughs> I did one. I am using my coffee coffee mug today. Yes. My literal coffee mug. Leah gave me this as a gift on our holiday program, if you were not here to watch it. <laughs> um, and it has the Dewey number for coffee on it, which is just so sweet. And it has like this little text here, kind of like um, in a library catalog, perhaps. Um, and availability, rather than saying one copy, it says one cup. <laughs> good morning, Andrea. It's good to see you. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Wondering, Audrey, um, if I were the boss of my day, it would start a couple of hours later. Yeah, <laughs> I always think morning should be done away with. Nothing can happen till afternoon. Yeah. Well, I for me, morning time, I actually have my most energy in the morning. So that's when I like to get stuff done. It's just, it is hard to wake up to an alarm though. Mm -hmm. I feel like and when I'm in my natural thing, I would wake up around like 7.30 and be ready to go. That's how I am. And I like doing stuff at that time. I like being up and being active. I know. I'm so sorry. I know. I know. But I do think waking up to alarm is very difficult. And that is uh, one of those things that I feel fortunate to have experienced some during the pandemic when we were home. Yeah. You yeah. kind of got in that to a natural rhythm of things. You were still mm -hmm. doing work but you kind of just like you found that rhythm that worked for you and for me I actually was I usually started my work day a half an hour earlier when I worked from home but that's because I got into a rhythm <laughs> okay you're weird I know I mean, say it um I know. <laughs> mornings are awful they should be avoided at all costs I am the most productive later afternoon I I love I need for like my productive time to hit earlier in the day because like around 4.30 is when I hit my stride, yeah. right? And then I end up staying like 45 minutes to an hour after the end of my shift because I'm like, oh, I can get this one more thing done. And it's just like. That's right. I know that if I am much more likely to count, to be able to like you more than most people catch you after the time that you're supposed to have left. Um, it's funny that you say that though, because for me, it's the complete opposite. Once I hit like 345, I feel like, okay, like I, that, that's when I have to transition to something that doesn't really take much from me and is more just kind of like some busy work that I can just get through because I have, I have nothing left to give. I think maybe it's because everyone else has hit that point and they leave me alone that I can like finally dig into the stuff that like takes more thought and concentration and I can- I bet you're right. Mm -hmm. I bet you are so right about that. That is the time when people leave you alone. Everyone yeah. else it. So you're like, okay, now I can do my stuff. Which yeah. we have very different jobs too. You have a lot of people around and I don't, so. Yeah, very, very different. Um, Audrey says it's easier when it's not winter, when the sun comes up, I can get up too. Yes. I, I'm like that. I do get up earlier in the summer, not, not early, but earlier. And I wake up happier in the summer. The sunlight doesn't do anything here. You're never up early and you're probably never delighted to be awake in any season. You probably have that transition period where you're like angry at being awake regardless. But I agree with Audrey too. When the sun's up, I feel much more inclined to get up and I think I sleep. That means it must mean I sleep less in the summer too, because yeah. I mean, winter is made for sleeping. And Andrea says she's the opposite of me Four thirty 30 years wind down time. Mm -hmm. I, I totally know that I am like complete opposite of everyone in the world. I think that's what makes me so wonderful and unique. I don't know. <laughs> that's what makes you special. And we got to have all kinds because someone's got to still be doing work at four 30, right? We can't, we can't all be. <laughs> Right. Yeah. 
Oh man. Well, it's good to see you this morning. Also, we said we're going to introduce ourselves because sometimes, oh, yeah. sometimes we don't. I'm Allison. I'm the technical services librarian at Fairfield County District Library. And we we're going to introduce ourselves and say what we were reading. At some point, maybe we'll do this naturally and I won't have this awkward introduction. Um, yeah, but what I'm reading right now is another advanced reading copy of a book. So I don't actually remember the author's name at this point, but it's called Whisper Down the Lane. And Whisper Down the Lane is like another um, name for a, the game telephone. So you start okay. something and then it was, you whisper down the lane. And this is actually like, a, it's a horror book. I had to stop reading it two nights ago because I was just, I was it was nighttime and I couldn't do it. So I had to read it during the day. Um, and it's inspired by like the satanic panic um, of the 80s and yeah. the true, I mean, it really happened, but whether or not it, this part really happened, um, reports of like cult and demonic behavior, you know, and, and people kidnapping children and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's based around that and it tells a story that takes place in the 80s and then a story that takes place in 2013, um, back and forth and kind of this parallel story. And it is very creepy and, uh, um, yeah, so I'll let you know. I'll, I'll, I'll pass that title on to you. It's an e copy, so I can't pass you the actual book, but I will let you know the the author. It's called Whisper Down the Lane, and it's creeping me out. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Leah Kerrigan. I, um, I'm the adult. I'm, what am I? Adult? So I'm the coordinator of adult services. That's my title at, at the library. Um, so I do all the adult stuff. Um, I'm currently reading uh, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I've talked about it on here before. Um, I showed the book, and but I I didn't read the book book. I waited for the uh, audio version. So I'm about a third of the way through the book, and I'm loving it. Um, this woman uh, makes a deal with a god and trades uh, her soul for immortality. He gets her soul when she's done with it. And she's been alive for like 400 and some years. And, um, uh, but the catch is no one remembers her, but she has just met a man from a bookstore who remembered her. Like that's where I am in the story. And she's like, what is going on? How do you remember me? 400 years? No one does. And yeah. I am, uh, uh, I'm like, what's going on? How do you remember her? So she and I are at the same point. Right. And I am loving it. Like this author, Lee Schwab, 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 Schwab. <laughs> yes. Don't you love I'll have that story for you in a minute. Um, <laughs> the, the language is just like lyrical and the way it flows. It's just, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I'm loving this book. So highly yeah. recommend it. Even though I haven't finished it yet. Well, I'm just so glad you're reading it because, like I said, I saw I saw like people like just kind of things bubbling up about it. Oh, you should read this book. Word of mouth type of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is what this is really good book. So I'm really happy that you're reading it, and I would like to read it. It's on it's on my list for at some point, and so I'm eager to hear what you think of it. But that's what I'd heard too. Um, we do a lot some, of comments. Yeah. Um, Melanie's a morning person. Tara gets her second wind when it's time for bed. That happens to me a lot too. Um, hi, Judith. Uh, hi, I'm Leah. I'm, I'm the adult. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also, I, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I am, I'm, I just don't even have words for what I am sometimes. And <laughs> it's never one of the things I think of myself as, which is so weird because I'm so old, but yeah. Um, <laughs> sometimes you know, so I'm the adult or adult in the room and that is never me, but yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Says, she is not it either. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. You like look around. You're like, oh, who's the person who's more adulty than I am? You know, well, Melanie yeah. is not a morning person. She was just saying morning. You are slandering her on you, here by calling. Her. I know that about Melanie, so I don't know why I was like, oh, Melanie says she's a morning person. <laughs> don't <laughs> repeat these lies about <laughs> Melanie on a public forum. <laughs> Um, and Tara is going to recommend Heather Weber's Blackbird Cafe and South of the Buttonwood Tree. She, she's an Ohio author. Ohio author. And Melanie thinks being an adult is overrated. So, 
Yeah, I think Tara told me about this the other day at work. She was listening to one of those books by Heather Weber, Heather Weber and she said that she like doesn't want it to be over. You know, it's playing and she doesn't want it to end. And, you know, because she just had loved living in that story. I'm speaking for her now. I'm sure she can comment these things herself if she wanted to. But she, I just. It's that, easier to be that type. Yeah, and backing her up, she had said, I think she did tell me about those books and said that she just like really loved living in them. And it's always great to hear about Ohio authors um, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of them. And yes. yeah, it's fun to read local as they, the same way that you can shop local. <laughs> so, uh, she was just saying morning because she thinks good morning is kind of pushy. And it's also a lie. If it's morning, it's not good. Right. That's how much of not a morning person she is. She refuses to say good morning. It, it's a lie. Okay. <laughs> I obviously am like in a mood this morning. I, I don't know where that came from, except that I slept really well last night, which often isn't the case for me. I My sleep is usually very interrupted and I wake up a lot during the night, which is one of the yeah. reasons I think that I remember my dreams so well. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, I can't wait for this. I had a dream earlier this week that you were in. I'm okay. honored. <laughs> yes. So you and I had gone to a ball. It was the hoopla ball. <laughs> I mean, hoopla, as you know, is a library resource that we get audiobooks and that's what I use it for music and movies and ebooks, mm -hmm. but both the hoopla app. And that's a great company. I, I've, I've visited them. I've talked to the owners. I mean, wonderful company. But in my they're dream, excellent life, sales reps. They're very friendly, very easy to engage with. Who just was? Right. Just right. Yeah, just they're right. a great company. Sales rep also makes an appearance in this, um, <laughs> right? So, but they they throw this lavish, lavish ball. I mean, there are they lights projected on the on the wall in that teal blue that they use, and there's like a band and dancing and we're wearing ball gowns and they're like fancy hors d'oeuvres and cocktails. I mean, like kind of like the Regency, like ball, <laughs> like with- You watched Bridgerton? Did this- I know, yet, not yet, but I keep hearing okay. about it. That's part of what's going on in my mind. Um, but there was a hoopla ball and it was just like, it was fabulous. <sighs> we so still you know, have this ball. And um, a FedEx, not a FedEx, UPS guy comes up to me in his brown uniform, everything, and he delivers a package. And that wasn't at all at odd that UPS found me at a ball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he delivers this package to me, but it's like an inner office envelope. So who sends an inner office envelope via UPS? I don't know, but made sense in the dream. And it was lumpy. Um, and uh, so I open it up and it's an apology from our sales rep, James, who actually is no longer our sales rep, but used to be our sales rep. I do miss James, though. He's a lot of fun. He is a lot of fun. He's great. All of their salespeople are great. They're all, they're all great. I don't mean he's fun in comparison to our other reps. In case any of them are watching, because they're all lovely. But we have had some fun. Back so, um, but James was, but he, he sent this apology because he couldn't meet up with us at the ball. But what it was was rubber ducks. You know me. I collect rubber ducks. I love rubber ducks. So I take them out and there are these two rubber ducks and they're white and they glow in the dark, but you squeeze the one and it lit up from within with this red light and then it breathes out fire. Oh my gosh. And then you squeeze the other one and then it lit up with this blue light from within and it breathed out ice. It was like, no, they were like rubber duck, rubber, rubber duck dragon hybrids. So they were like, the coolest rubber ducks ever because like fire and ice breathing rubber ducks can't I'm, wow they that i mean that sounds incredible it right? sounds like something that if they could they would do that for us if we needed it were they branded hoopla on the side by chance you know no they were not but they so were it wasn't like from james wow. and then like we were getting ready to leave the ball and like I said, this is a lavish ball. Men are in tuxedos. We're in ball gowns. And James comes running in. He's wearing like crumpled, rumpled khakis. He's carrying his laptop bag and his coat. And he's just like, he comes running in and he runs up to us. He's like, oh, there you are. I found you. He's like, are you guys having a good time? And I'm like, yo, this is, this is fabulous. 
We're at a ball. Hello. We're having a great time. Right. So he's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're having a good time. I'm like, thank you for the ducks. And he's like, oh, yeah, no problem. Just I'm sorry. I couldn't spend more time with you. And then he like runs off. And like that was right. it. And I woke up after, shortly after. So I remember this dream very vividly. And I really, really hope that like once people can get back together, Hoopla throws a ball. Because I believe I will, I will be using the like suggestion box on their website uh, to recommend this. I believe it's, it's supposed to be for like title requests, but I'm gonna please have a ball and invite me. This sounds wonderful. I want to go to a hoopla ball. They're very um, what's the word? They're very like hospitable, you know, as a company. And I just I feel like they throw a wonderful ball. What a dream! I am not I'm not that creative. It was, I am it was fabulous. So. And the ducks, I would love to be able to create that for you. If I could just, I'll get like a, a blowtorch or a flamethrower or something and craft a, a, a around, around it in some way or something. And oh my God. Light up and glow in the dark. And just and for, while we're on here and talking about this, um, may he never watch it. Uh, our, our, the rep that she's talking about, James, he is a, a fun guy and I feel like would appreciate starring in a dream this way and that midwest was able to be in a dream like this because um you know we have those binge boxes at the mm -hmm. library where you can get multiple movies on a theme or starring a person and the year that they debuted the binge boxes he and his team dressed up as a will ferrell binge box so they all had a different costume from a di as a different will ferrell character um and then like posed with a binge box frame mm -hmm. And he he dressed up as the ice skater Will Ferrell, like in the leotard. Like James, right? Am I right? I don't know. I don't remember who he was, to be honest. And I don't know I if really Will Ferrell in that movie. Leotard. Okay, but he may have been the basketball one, or like the one in where he's like, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I do know it was a kind of picture. It was a level of commitment that I admire. Yes. In my sales rep, I feel like they would do anything for me if they are willing to not only do that for a costume, but then also share it with me as their yeah. as their customer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, James has a great sense of humor, and the one thing that I you know really connect with him on is the costumes. Like his, he showed me pictures of like white uh, costumes his wife made for their their oh, kids. Yeah. They have the best Halloween costumes, and you know me and Halloween, so and yes. Yes. Something I very much like. So yes. So thank you, for that dream. <laughs> thank you for sharing that dream with us. And um, thank you for everyone here for listening to us uh, talk about our, our vendor relationships, but um, it is not everyone even knows where library materials come from, but they do come from vendors that generally work specifically with libraries or work mm -hmm. with libraries and other places like that use books. Um, but you know, we're not just purchasing things from Amazon. We have we have companies that give us discounts that are appropriate for a public, a public <laughs> resource. Um, public funds and yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're not just you know going to Target and buying the James Patterson off the shelf. And so we do have um, we do have these relationships with companies. And um, I don't know. It's it's nice to know where your materials are coming from and know that someone's watching out for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was just. But yeah, hoopla ball. That is interesting. I don't have anything nearly that interesting, but I did have something to tell you, which is okay. that a long time ago on here, um, I brought in a new book by Tana French called The Searcher. And you were yeah. like, oh, I read her mysteries, her Dublin Murder Squad mysteries. And I said, well, we have these two books by her that are just standalones. And I launched into how I didn't know where to put them, blah, blah, blah. She writes these mysteries. I went down a rabbit hole. I read an interview with her. <laughs> I decided to put them in fiction because she said that she felt like a mystery reader would say, well, where's my mystery? So I feel like that's fair. But you were telling me, I think that there's characters in it from her double murder squad. That might be a lie, but I don't know. Well, what I was going to, so I decided to listen to, I'm listening to the witch elm. I'm almost done. I'm like an hour and a half from the end. And um, it was like at a critical point. So I have to like, wait till I have like an hour and a half to finish mm -hmm. listening to it. Um, and it has been really good, really engaging. And there is the investigation of a murder in it, but um, like 
So I'm wondering, okay, so I'm wondering if the, is Detective Rafferty somebody from her books? Rafferty. I feel like I've heard that name. Because there's a, there's a thing where she will introduce a character in a book and then like, but they're just like a minor character. And then the next book is about that character. Okay. Well, the way that this book went is it's, it's about, it's a, it's a, it begins with a story about a man and his relationship and something that happens to him. You're a third of the way in before any type of anything happens that would involve um, someone like the double murder squad. And the, the way that the book is structured basically is you probably could write a Dublin murder squad mystery from the perspective of the detectives, but this book is written from the perspective of the people who live in the home on which the remains were found. Oh. And so they are, the book is about how, basically how so a discovery like that can tear a family apart or tear your own self apart and how they kind of cope with this investigation that's happening and you know what that brings up amongst them, mm -hmm. especially because Thing that happened earlier in the book before they even discover these remains and so i thought that was really interesting and if the main detective in this is called detective rafferty but there's other detectives who come um and they do spend some time talking about like about them in such a way that made me wonder if you if you had read her other books if you would really appreciate this seeing some of these people in action from a totally different perspective from the I perspective think, of yeah that sounds familiar but she's never had a, a book that that character was the focus of. And they talked about one of their coworkers, like there's two detectives and I can't remember the other one's name. Um, and they talked about another one of their coworkers, like coming up with these outlandish theories and they're like laughing at him. And I just wondered like, I wonder if that character is like somewhere in her other books. And so you spend this, like these people are like angry at these detectives for disrupting their lives and you know, some legitimately, some not legitimately. And it, you're almost like rooting against the detectives because like you don't, you know, I mean, you want yeah. justice yeah. to be, you, you know, like, yeah. but you know, you, you see what it's doing to this family and all these types of things. And so I do think that if you have enjoyed her other things and if you, at least you like her writing style mm -hmm. and that kind of thing with the witch elm is the one that I'm listening to now, the narration is excellent. Um, he has this very, he does all these different voices really well, but he has this, baseline Irish accent that is very lovely to listen to. Um, he speaks very slowly, which I know that some people may not like, but for a story like this, I like to kind of be drawn in. Especially when there's an accent, I think that helps. So Yeah, it just makes it, it just feels very nice to listen to. So The Witch Elm by Tana French, and then the second one, second one, I don't even know if they're related at all. Just her other standalone is called The Searcher, and it was newer, and I will, I'm going to be listening to that too, because I really, it's been really fun. Um, those are on my list of things to listen to. Like my, my, my listen to list is so long and like, like the book I'm listening to now is like 15 hours. That's a lot. <laughs> well, that's the thing about this one. This one is the upper limit of what I can conceive of listening to because it's like 22 hours, yeah. but he does speak slowly is I think part of it. Um, but cause I don't, I can't, I, do, I can't guarantee 22 hours is going to happen in one checkout. 11 hours. Sure, probably, but 22. Yeah, I've, and I've lately I've had like so many really long books. Um, mm -hmm. like this, like, I was doing this series, like with this, like whole espionage, end of the world, like political thriller thing that mm -hmm. just it took forever to get through. So it was really good, and I can't remember the name of it. I can't remember the title. Enemy was in all of the all of the titles. Um, Enemy within, and uh, I don't know, but um, but it 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 just took forever to get through. So yeah, I've been right. on a streak of really long books. Yeah, how do you keep track of the books that you want to listen to? Do you like heart them on Hoopla or like favorite them or whatever on Overdrive? Yeah, yeah. that's what I do. I um. I'll, I'll favorite them and then I'll take them off my favorites after I listen to them. Yeah, that's what that's what I do too. At first on Hoopla, I felt weird doing that because I'm like, well, I don't know if it's a favorite of mine. I've never read it. But that's really the only way to manage that on there. And yeah. then on um, Overdrive, you can kind of like tag it with this it's little like book symbol. Yeah, that's what I do. Like, yeah. it's a stack of books, so it's my to be read pile. Exactly. That is, that's what I do too. I just wondered. Because <laughs> it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem, 
Like I might as well take advantage of that than like keeping a separate list. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really convenient because it's right there. And then you have those days when you just open up the app. They're like, oh, I want just go, go to your list and be like that one. That, that's the yeah. one. Today. This is available. It looks good. Yeah. Um, speaking of long books. Also, I don't know if you all recall last weekend I held up the, or last Friday I held up this book. It was like it's called Strange the Dreamer. And it's like 530 pages long. And I was like, well, I have to read this whole thing for book club by Tuesday. I did it. I did it. We had a long weekend. The library was closed on Monday. So I did finish the book, um, start to finish over the weekend. And I, I wouldn't have if it wasn't, if I didn't enjoy it, I'm sure. But I did enjoy it. And I wanted to say that too, because I know I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, <laughs> you, but you, you didn't seem excited about reading that book. I know. I you admit. That's because it was like a fantasy situation. It was also, even though it's not about teenagers, it is a teen, teen, young adult type of book. That's where it was shelved. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it, despite both of, both of those things not being things that I typically read. I felt I had felt intimidated by them, like, I don't know about this and if I can keep it all straight. But um, the writing style was lovely, and I really... I really enjoyed the experience of reading it. Audrey was right, it is very immersive. She's right that it's also not entirely like uplifting, um, mm -hmm. but I did enjoy the story a lot. And um, I would definitely, I don't know who I would recommend it to because I would have to feel like they would be willing to commit yeah. to that. Um, and But but I would recommend it, I did enjoy it. So I wanted to update everyone, I finished it. <laughs> very good. Um, yes, and The Witch Elm is on Overdrive. Yes, that is where, that is actually where I'm listening to. Um, Andrea offers. And then we wanted to know how you keep track of your to be read lists. And we, Leah and I, and I think Becky too, we have talked about this before on here um, about our cobbled together versions that you think would be more organized for who we are and where we work. Some of some of mine are very organized. Like I, I, I have a spreadsheet, but then I also have thousands of little scraps of paper. Um, they're they're cut up holds lists that you know we pull holds lists all the time at the library and um it's just the list of the books and the the call number and the title and the author you know no personal information um and then we turn those pieces of paper into scrap paper mm -hmm. um so <laughs> around my house at, in my desk i look everywhere i will do in your bed. I find them <laughs> in my pants pockets i i <laughs> <laughs> They're just like scraps of paper with an author and a title and sometimes like a little note to the side, like NF, R, M, you know, exclamation point for thriller, you know, just like, <laughs> so I have an idea of like yeah. genre it falls into. Yeah. We'll just find these little scraps of paper all around my house. Yeah. Well, my favorite scrap of paper you've ever found is the scrap of paper to yourself that said books on it. I found a second post-it note that just said books on it. Like I picked up a book on my desk and there was another post-it note that said books. That is the most ridiculous note for a librarian to leave herself. I mean, it, that could be anything. That could be absolutely anything. Yes. Um, Audrey says that she just goes by the pile method. Lots of piles until <laughs> they do and then she has to give up and give them back. That's a lot like my method actually. I do have I do have a, a typed list of books that as I'm cataloging things, I'm like, oh, I want to read this. And then I just like make a note of it to myself in this document. But um, as far I'm looking over here because that's where the pile lives. Um, as far as things I check out and take home, yep, they just sit around here. There's too many piles. I read I read as much as I can and then I have to return them. And I do think it might be worth it someday for us to add on the segment of these are the books I'm returning this week that I never got a chance to read. They're probably good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't even tell you the number of books that I've checked out multiple times and have never gotten around to read. It just, it, it, there are so many books and not enough time because I have to do this stupid thing called a job. <laughs> it's not stupid. It's not stupid at all. I just want more reading. It does keep you from reading though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I like my job. I do. But anything that keeps us from reading, is, it's just this barrier, you know? Yeah. Is there anything like you're looking forward to reading or any books that you... Well, we were supposed to talk about nonfiction this week. It's supposed to, whatever. We exceeded. Check on that. We'll just tell Mary to copy and paste this uh, today's summary to next week when we have actually time to do that. Um, is there anything... 
I did bring, I, okay, so I had a couple nonfiction things already at home. <laughs> and this is probably honestly gonna be the next nonfiction book that I read. Always Young and Restless by Melody Thomas Scott, <laughs> who is from the show The Young and the Restless and has been on it for, I'm gonna see if I can skim this really quickly. She has been Nikki, I don't know, it doesn't say, I feel like maybe for 40 years. <laughs> like that might not be an exaggeration, I'm not sure. Um, and so I'm sorry to out my mother on here, but she watched soap operas when I was growing up. And so I'm familiar with Young and the Restless. And I, <laughs> I, I, I went through a phase where I, I would, like, especially like when I was like middle school age, um, in the summer times, I would get addicted to the to the soap operas. And it's like, well, like I don't know who this character is, but by, like by the end of the summer, you're like so invested in the story, and then like nine months would go by, and you come back, and it like only three months had passed in the yes. Lives. By the yes, next no, you can always pick it up. It doesn't matter. Like you yeah. always can. It, no matter how much time has passed, even though the actors have changed and someone different is being this person, and they're essentially ageless, yeah. you yeah. still know who they are. But the Somehow, like only three months have gone by, but the kids are now adults. I know, and having their own relationships. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Melanie says that she used to watch Young and the Restless. Thank you so very much for admitting that um, in public. I just and in the I feel like reality, some of the reality, reality television that I watch, like Real Housewives and stuff, it's really just an extension of this genre. You yeah. know, it's just a present day version of that, and that's yeah, yeah. And and Tara says her grandmother called them her shows. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, Mary says she used to watch Days of Our Lives. That was the one that I liked when I was when I was a teenager. Mary? I, Days of Our Lives. I watched this. That, that we put watch that too. Oh my gosh, I did not know that, Mary. I never would have guessed. This is I a revelation. Not like Mary. Um they used to bring younger characters on for story arcs to lure teens in for the summer. Oh, that makes sense. That does. Like, yeah, because that makes and sense. And bold and the beautiful, Tara. Yeah. Young the rest is good. Oh, yes, Stefano. Oh. Days of our lives and guiding light. Um, those were the 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 block that was on in the summertime. That's really interesting to think about them bringing the younger characters on in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for indulging me in that. Leah, are you? Do you have anything that you are uh, looking forward to? You know what? That you brought to talk about or? Uh, Jagged Little Pill. Yeah. I was so excited um, when I I watched. The, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and I saw that they had made a, 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 a musical about using the music from Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill album, and I, I have no idea what the musical's about. This will tell me, I'm sure, because it introduces you to the characters that are in the musical, yeah. but yeah. it uses lyrics from her songs. Mm -hmm. I love Alanis Morissette. Like, Everyone knows the Jagged Little Pill song and um, I mean the Jagged Little Pill album, but like I love a lot of her newer stuff. Like she gets very different down the line. Yeah. Um, it's not quite as angry, <laughs> you know, but, um, but I just, I love her music and like, it just speaks to me on a level that I don't know. Like I'm, I'm not a fan. I love her music, and I cannot wait to see this this musical when like yeah. you can go out and do that kind of thing again. And uh, you know, it will be really hard to not like sit there in the audience singing along to these songs that I know by heart. And mm -hmm. like, I just. I'm I'm so so super excited about that. That's awesome. Book. I remember doing that book, uh, cataloging that book, and it was funny. I had two books that day, and I don't remember the other one. It might come to me later. But two books that I, when I was pulling things off, I was like, these will be easy because when I saw Jagged Little Pill, I was like, this is about the Alanis Morissette album Jagged Little Pill. And then I was like, wait a second. When I opened okay. it up, I was like, it's not. I'm like, does this go with Broadway shows? Does this go with? Atlantis Morissette. And, um, you know, it's about the show, so it goes with the show. Mm -hmm. But uh, just I had two books that day that were both like, I pick it up and I'm like, I know where this goes. And then I look at it, I'm like, I don't know where this goes. Actually, they were things that said one thing, 
but actually with something else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I love her music. And like, it's one of those things, like I can't sing and definitely not like, I do not sing in a female range. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, uh, my my choir director was uh, what did what did she say? Uh, I I don't remember. Uh, never mind. Uh, uh, but yeah, she would write special like sections for me so that I was like going in between like the 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 alto and the the tenor parts like because I, I, I altos get too high for me. Um, yeah. But. <laughs> um, and I was I did all th I did theater so much when I was in high school. I was in all the plays. Mm -hmm. When it came around time for the musicals, they would rewrite a character that was a male to be a female for me. It was never it's never a character with a lot of singing because yeah. I, I don't sing well. But I because I was doing all the other plays and the acting, like Yeah. Like, yeah. So like they would turn a sorcerer into a sorceress or a, a, a yeah or into a maid for me so that yeah. I could take part that was, in kind, of them. That was kind of them it, it was, was very really kind of them. so um but so I love musical theater and I love 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 yeah. Alanis Morissette so I yeah can't that is very exciting. Thank you for sharing that book. Cause I remember thinking, and that book is really cool too. For anyone mm -hmm. who's interested, it has like a really cool format to it. And it's a neat, it's a neat book. Yeah. Um, we are having some discussions in the comments about passions, the soap opera, which I actually never watched. I know a lot of people have watched passions and I have not. Um, I'm sure that I would, would have loved it. You mean um, you're not paying attention to me when I'm talking? I, apparently passions, it's more important. It's more said. Um, but I think passions also, Melanie says, didn't they run their stories like a little bit shorter and more quickly resolved? That sounds like it's probably true. And I think they also had a slight, if I'm wrong, I might be wrong. Did they have a slight supernatural element to them? Possibly like, not like overtly, but like, like a little bit of witchcraft or something. Uh, so maybe Mary or Melanie can answer me that. But Mel Mary says she thinks it was only a half an hour or two. Yeah, I think that if anybody my age watched a soap opera at that time. It was Passions. Um, Judith says Broadway all the way. She's here for your jagged little pill. Okay. <laughs> um, you, you were probably too young to appreciate Alanis Morissette, weren't you? Oh no, I appreciate Alanis Morissette. I don't. I can't. I don't even want to share the stories about Alanis Morissette that I have. Yeah, definitely some witchy stuff. Mary says um, I've always visually. Um, appeared somewhat like Alanis Morissette. So uh, she always caught my eye long before whatever. But no, I was, I mean, her stuff was very popular when I was like in junior high. So yeah, yep. Um, and I was certainly on that bandwagon of people like, but it's not ironic. There's nothing ironic about that. So. Everybody's got a thing, like literally, half of America does not know how to use the word literally. So mm -hmm. eh, forgive her I, for using yes. ironic incorrectly, whatever. It's a great song. It is a really great song. I really enjoy listening to it, but it is, it you gotta, gotta get over that hurdle. Yeah. I'm willing to do it though. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yes, I'm um, excited to read this book. Good. Well, you have to report back to us on that and keep us up to date on the invisible life of Addie LaRue because I am eager to hear what you think of it. Um, and next week, perhaps we'll talk about nonfiction. Maybe. In the wider world. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? We never know what we're going to talk about. Well, we, I love how we have a plan for what we're going to talk about and then like things like dreams take over and soap operas. And that's what right. I'm focused on. And that's what we talk about instead. So we'll have a plan for next week and uh, we'll see how it goes. Who knows? <laughs> it was good to see everybody. Thank you for being here and we yes, will you. see you next week. See ya.